Hello, everybody. This is Giancarlo Alino, and I am happy to be joined by my guest today. You may have heard of him. He was recently chosen for ESPN's First Take Your Take, where he got a chance to debate Stephen A. Smith. He is the host of the Waterboy Report podcast, Luca Rosano. Welcome to Beyond the Game, Luca. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Giancarlo. I'm looking forward to it. How you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Getting ready for uh, tomorrow's uh, Game 3 of the NBA Finals. We'll see if uh, LeBron and the Cavs can make it a competitive series. Uh, Luca, before we get into your uh, appearance on ESPN's First Take, Your Take, I want to give our listeners a chance to get to know you a little bit better. Can you talk to us a little bit about what inspired you to want to start a sports podcast, and uh, how did you get the name The Waterboy Report? Yeah, that's a good question. I, uh, I get that one a lot. So back in uh, December of 2013, I, uh, I've always been a, a diehard, lifelong sports fan. So it was December of 2013, I was in my basement thinking, okay, you know what? I have aspirations of getting big in the sports media world, of uh, voicing my opinion. So I wanted to create an outlet that would give myself a chance to voice that personal opinion of mine. So the Waterboy Report actually started off as a, an online uh, blog in 2013. And at one point, I had a bunch of uh, beat writers writing for me. We had a couple of beat writers uh, focusing on the NBA, NHL, pretty much all the major sports. Then I kind of took a little bit of a, a break from that to focus on my final year of uh, a university over at the University of Gulf Humber. And uh, then I relaunched the Waterboy Report as a social media brand in 2016, the summer of 2016. And I primarily posted, you know, funny content that you see go viral nowadays, memes, stuff like that on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. And then it was really this year, Giancarlo, where I really wanted to develop as uh, an on-air personality, a sports pers- uh, personality. So I really focused on YouTube at the start of 2018. And now I post pretty much daily and I try to focus on content of, uh, uh, you know, sports topics that are uh, big, that are going on, uh, relevant sports topics. I have the podcast, like you mentioned, uh, Waterboy Uncut. I do that every Monday. And I also have a specialty segment called Waterboy on the Street where I, uh, where I um, you know, engage with sports fans on the street and also expose bandwagon fans. I, I'm not sure if uh, people have seen that series, but uh, I've done a couple of those. So right now, the, uh, the Waterboy Report is primarily a social media brand and a YouTube brand. And I got the name The Waterboy Report. It wasn't from the classic movie um, that everybody thinks it's from, where uh, The Waterboy by, uh, with Adam Sandler. I actually got the name The Waterboy Report because... I always wanted to be an athlete, and I was never good enough to play in the game, but I still wanted to be around the game. So I tried to compare myself to uh, a member figure in the sports world, and I kind of resonated with the water boy. You know, he's, he's kind of in the game, but not really. He kind of has that, that sideline perspective of what's going on, even though, you know, he's assisting the players with giving them water. So I'm assisting the people in the public with giving them sports information and, and sports value and entertainment. So that's how I came up with the uh, – the name the waterboy report and uh, i continue to just uh grow my uh, my brand and uh you know and uh, hope for the best yeah and those who follow your uh social media feeds like your instagram feed like myself know that you're a proud resident of vaughn ontario and through that you've also done great jobs in forming great relationships with uh local businesses in vaughn now in the case of forming those great partnerships for your podcast did you find any difficulties at all that's a good question. So it's uh, no matter what you're trying to develop, whether it's a sports brand or you have some entertainment brand, you always have to be the spokesperson, front and center of your brand. And when you you know get these great businesses on board, they got to see what they're getting themselves into. They got to believe in your vision, and they got to know that you're a person capable of really elevating their brand with your brand. So in terms of having difficulties I would say it comes with growing the brand of course when I first started out I never really thought of potentially getting sponsors on board but then when I started seeing my numbers grow particularly on Instagram and and with YouTube I thought you know what this is the opportunity where I can get a couple of local businesses especially in the Bond area like you mentioned on the same vision as mine so it just comes to the uh, the fact that you got to be a preacher of what you're seeing and you got to believe in what you're doing because if you don't believe in what you're doing and put 110 percent into it no one else is going to take you seriously 
For those just joining us on Vibe 105, this is Beyond the Game, and I'm speaking with the host of the Waterboy Report, Luca Rosano. Luca, you were a part of history a few weeks ago when you became the first Canadian to be chosen for ESPN's First Take Your Take, where you got a chance to debate against the GOAT, Stephen A. Smith. How did that appearance on First Take Your Take all come about, and what was that experience like debating Stephen A. Smith? Yeah, it was incredible. Definitely the uh, defining moment so far of my young career. Incredibly humbling experience going up against, as you call them, the GOAT of sports media. He's one of the most well-known sports analysts out there. Uh, he was one of the first sports analysts I grew up watching over here where we're from in, uh, in Vaughn, uh, Vaughn, Ontario, Vaughn, Canada. And I never envisioned myself going one-on-one -on -one against Stephen A. Smith. So uh, to answer your question, the opportunity came about because uh, ESPN, they have a great opportunity that they have been giving to their viewership on their Facebook page. So every week they have a forum and they have a topic question in which the public, people like you and I can submit their take. And then in that particular week, their uh, producers, their higher ups, they choose the best take from the public that they receive. And uh, it was uh, two Fridays ago that uh, I was selected as the best take for that given week. And I went up against Stephen A. Smith. So my take beat out a bunch of other entries. Like uh, you said, I made a bit of history because I was the first ever Canadian to be featured on ESPN's first take, your take, and got to go up against the one and only Stephen A. Smith. And uh, as far as the conversation went, we talked about where LeBron James should play next season. And my standpoint, just to summarize it, was I believe LeBron James should stay in Cleveland or else his legacy would be negatively impacted. And we would always kind of look at LeBron as being a team jumper and a ring chaser in order to get those rings and taking the easy way out as opposed to doing it the hard fought way. Now, my standpoint was from the premise that LeBron James was going to win the championship this year against the Warriors. Now, mind you, there's still games to be played. That is still a possibility. But in a perfect world, that was my standpoint. I thought LeBron James could have gotten it done, which he still could. And if he does, he will stay and I think he should stay and also recruit players to come play with him versus leaving once again to further tarnish his, his image in that regard of being the guy who had to win championships with other teams as opposed to doing it in one spot. Staying on that topic of LeBron James, you and I, both being Raptors fans, have seen LeBron and the Cavs constantly eliminate the Raptors in the playoffs. And as we both saw, there were consequences for that. And Dwayne Casey was fired as Raptors head coach in the same year that the franchise had a record 59 wins. And Dwayne Casey was even a finalist for coach of the year. Now, in your opinion, do you think that the Raptors made the right decision by firing Dwayne Casey? That's a very good question. Very subjective. I think the Raptors were put in no man's land. When you have a record-setting year, you have this hot team, 59 wins, getting into the playoffs, and you get dismissed by the Cavaliers in the way they did, a sweep for the second straight year in the playoffs. The easiest way out to take in that position is fire the coach. We've seen this in all of sports. It's never going to change. It's the narrative that's always going to stay true, where if you need to make a major change right away, following a devastation to end your season, it's always going to be the head coach. So I get where the Raptors were coming from. I get their standpoint from there. Now, do I agree with it? I'm still kind of on the, on the fence. A part of me says, you know what, he did have seven years. He did help bring this team to where it was. But at the end of the day, if your resume doesn't speak for itself in the playoffs, We've seen many great coaches over the years, you know, get the get the the pink slip because they were unable to perform in the playoffs. But a part of me says that he's still, in my opinion, the best Raptors coach that we've ever had, and he's a guy that will at least get you to the second round of the playoffs and give you a chance. So I'm still on the fence, but I get why the Raptors did it. On that note, however, I do think the Raptors did need a change. They still do need a change now to its core, to its it's player personnel because as good as this team has been and you're going to have people saying, well, you know, at least they got it. They made it to the playoffs. You know, they make the second round. The goal should be to win championships. And that's what Masai Ujiri has been preaching since day one. And I trust in Masai. So in order for you to do that, you need some sort of change. You need some sort of player, you know, to come in, whether it's through a trade, whether it's, it's through a signing. You just got to give this team a better shot come playoff time 
or else we're just going to keep having these uh, these swings and misses in uh, in the playoffs. Yeah, as you brought up there, the mixed reactions from fans. You know, some uh, wanted the team to rebuild and trade Demar, trade Kyle Lowry, trade Valanciunas, and there's some that say maybe make a big trade, make a splash in uh, at the draft or free agency. Now, I want to get your take on this. If you're in Masai Ujiri's shoes, do you think the team should rebuild, or would you try to make that big trade to put them over the hump? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question, and uh, Masai Ujiri is definitely going to be the guy with a ton of pressure on his shoulders. To be honest with you, I don't, ne- I wouldn't necessarily call it a rebuild. I would say this team needs to retool. I do believe they need to switch something up now. Whether it's trading one of their two all stars, whether it's moving a piece like a Valentunis and an Abaka, you got to do what you got to do to just get better with your roster whether it's trying to get a draft pick and trying to get into the draft, you need to do something to change up the team. Now, I wouldn't necessarily blow it up, but you got to look at what you got here. You've obviously seen guys like DeRozan and Lowry not come up big in the playoffs, and for as good as they've been in the regular season, you know you can measure success based on postseason success. And both of those guys haven't necessarily had good outings the past couple of years. You look at a guy like Jonas Valanciunas, you know, under the Casey system, he wasn't necessarily playing big time minutes in the fourth quarter. So maybe that will change with the new guy in charge. Maybe you keep him. So it's definitely going to be an interesting off season. I'll put it at that, where uh, as we see the direction Masai Ujiri will take with this team, but ultimately to start over and tank to go get the number one pick in next year's draft. I don't think that's called for, but you can definitely move some pieces around in terms of getting better at, uh, at the, with the roster and uh, hoping that translate into a little bit more postseason success because a lot of it has to do, too, with LeBron James being in the East. I don't care what team you are. I, I, I tweeted something where LeBron has single-handedly ended Reigns of teams in the East since 2010. You know, the great Bulls team, the, the great Indiana Pacers team. I know the Celtics were on, uh, they were aging, but, you know, he, got, he finally got past them. So a lot of it does have to do with LeBron James, but also you got to do your part, of course, if you're Masai Ujiri, to at least try to give your team the best product come, uh, come next season. Once again, for those just joining us on Vibe 105, this is Giancarlo Alino of Beyond the Game speaking with the host of the Waterboy Report, Luca Rosano. Uh, Luca, I want to just get back to your social media and your YouTube channel. You have these videos where you're outside the ACC exposing Leafs and Raptors fans. Which Leafs or Raptors bandwagon fan was like the most memorable for you? Where you were thinking to yourself after that, man, this guy can't be serious. <laughs> That's a, that's a great question. Yeah, that has quickly become my favorite segment just to uh, just to kind of, um, you know, throw it up there and uh, see if uh, fans know what they're talking about. But I think my favorite moment, it has to be, um, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't specifically correlated with the Raptors player, but it had to do with Vince LaSalle. And Vince LaSalle, for those of you who don't know, is a popular Disney's recess character. And I was just naming some players that uh, this gentleman had to rank. And when I mentioned Vince LaSalle's name, the thing that got me is that he was so certain of this guy actually being in the NBA that he actually gave me a rank. So that, to me, was just one of those moments. There have been, they've been other moments, you know, uh, me throwing out random Leafs names and, and you know, fictional names. I, I, to be honest, I couldn't really tell you which one was my favorite. I think all of them do it justice in their own regard. And uh, all of them serve their purpose that uh, you got to definitely be on your guard if you're uh, if you're going to be representing Toronto sports, because you just never know if you'll uh, you'll get tested on the streets with your sports knowledge. Before we let you go, Luca, how can our listeners follow you on social media? They can connect with me on Instagram at the Waterboy Report, on Twitter, Waterboy Report, Facebook. You can like my Facebook page, the Waterboy Report. And then the biggest uh, thing I'll plug in here is my YouTube channel. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, continue to grow it and provide fresh, new, entertaining sports content and even some WWE content because I'm also a wrestling fan. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Waterboard Report. Thanks a lot, Luca. And our listeners, check that out. Subscribe, like on Facebook, and you won't regret it. Uh, Luca, we'd like to thank you for sharing your time and best of luck with The Waterboy Report. Thanks so much, Giancarlo, and best of luck with your show as well.
Thanks a lot. That was the host of the Waterboy Report, Luca Rosano. Now we're going to send it back to the studio for more Beyond the Game right here on Vibe 105. Hey guys, this is Luca Rosano of the Waterboy Report, and you're listening to Beyond the Game. Can't wait to do this and go at the king, the legend himself, Stephen A. Smith. Every single marquee name that has played in the purple and gold has delivered a chip. LeBron, are you going to be the one that comes up short? We always talk about LeBron James chasing Michael Jordan for the GOAT status. That's not GOAT status to me if he takes the easy way out. Beyond the Game, your main source, Vibe 105.